so today I am so excited. I have finally got my hands on this Makeup Forever HD Skin Face Essentials Palette. I have been trying to get one of these. I tried to get the original ones. This is actually a new one. I tried to get the original ones for so long and I'm so pleased I have finally got my hands on this new version and I cannot wait to show you how I'm using this. Over the last few days I've tried out a few different things. One is to layer as you would normally with your foundation first, mixing things together and then going in with all your other products from this for a full face. And the other way is to basically not layer upon layer, so to put for instance where you want your blush and your contour and your concealer basically in little dabs so you can mix it all together for that really quick and easy all done in one go look with not much on your skin at all which I think can be really good and breathable and just so easy and simple something I've always wanted to try been fascinated to see if it would work but not being able to get my hands really on a palette that I could do it with I know I can do that with the products I've got currently sitting in my beauty desk but I can't do it from just one palette and that's why I really wanted to try this so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do both ways one on each side so you can see how each one looks, what the application is like and see how, how they look different possibly. I don't know because I've never done it side by side. And I also filmed a check in the other day so you can see how this wears after eight hours. I can't wait to show you. And if you're new here, my name's Hannah. I'm 47, I'm not a professional, I'm just somebody who really, really enjoys makeup and everything to do with beauty. And if you think you might enjoy different looks, looking at new products, beauty news, anything like that, I would love it so much if you liked and subscribed. And also if you could comment below, that really, really helps my channel to get seen here on YouTube. And also my skin, if you're interested, is fair to light. I've got neutral undertones, I've got combination skin, which is mostly dry, but I do have quite an oily T-zone. Let's get on to the video. So here is this beautiful palette. I really do love the case. It's very neat and I just I just love it. I think it's really cool. And this is how it looks inside. Now it is a mess, I'm sorry about that. But like I said, I wanted to really try this one out for you. So you can see here, this is the light to medium option. They do have a medium to deep as well. So there's two palettes available and they're 72 pounds each. And if you're in the UK, this is not easy to find, but I managed to get mine from the Guru Makeup Emporium, and I've linked that below for you. So the way this palette works is you have six different foundation shades here, and then we have four blush shades here, and something new is they've introduced two highlighters as well. So obviously these are all cream, and the way that I would use this is mixing together these shades here to create my foundation colour. And then you can colour correct maybe with this one or the second lightest in the foundation. And then this one for contour and a mixture of these two here for bronze. And then with the blush you can load different colours on top of each other. You can mix them together to create a brand new colour or you could just go for a single colour. And with the highlights you can use these as sort of cheek toppers I would say. But this one I'd use as a cheek topper and this one more for the normal areas such as down the nose and normal highlight spots. So you really can do pretty much everything with this if it works, which is what I really, really can't wait to show you. So this is described as buildable, lightweight, and they blend super well all together with no caking. This is what it's saying on the description. And the brush I'll be using for this is the Chikahodo FO2 brush, which you can probably see from the size of this is absolutely perfect. So I'm going to start on this side by building it up as you do normally with your makeup and then I'll move to this side and do it the other way as you've seen in my cover photo. So I'll start off here with this lightest foundation shade, more really just to show you the colour this gives me. So it's quite pale if you can see there, a little bit too pale for me. And here is the second shade and this one's a bit too yellow. So if you mix the two together which is what I did, you end up with the right colour. So the way I've been using this in this way is to basically just dip into the two and get plenty of both on the brush. You do need to quite load the brush up to be fair. But then look, as soon as I do that, I'm, just, I'm getting quite a perfect shade. The other way, if you just want to be really messy, is to just swish over the two like this. And it gives pretty good coverage to be fair. I've got this horrible spot here today so it'll be interesting to see if it can hide that a bit for me. Now the redness around my nose you can see so 
and let's put it there. See how much it covered that up straight away. I really like the way with this that you can just basically make the colour your own. So if you wanted a bit more depth, a bit more warmth, a bit less warmth, if you want to lighten up, you just can by basically mixing the colours. Which is something I really love because when you've just got one foundation shade, you're stuck. If it's if it's a little bit too light or maybe you've got a tan and you want to increase the colour, having a palette like this, you can just make those changes yourself without needing to buy any other product. I mean, what I would say though is using it as your base like I am all the time because I'm obviously going to be using these two colours I probably would get through the two creams quite quickly but in all honesty this is the sort of thing I would use for a holiday because this really saves on packing and can you see it has covered up there it's not completely covered but it has slightly covered up that horrible spot <laughs> it's definitely got rid of the redness it's very comfortable to wear, it doesn't feel particularly heavy at all. What I would say is it does feel a bit greasy, but don't be put off by that because when it comes to the end I will powder and you'll see how that looks because it's not uncomfortably greasy. I forgot to mention my base beneath this actually, I've got my trusty Danessa Myrex Yummy Skin Serum on which mattifies and really stops the oils coming through, especially in my T-zone. But because this is quite an oily sort of product on me, I've got this all over packed on, which I know works well because I've been using it over the last two days. So there is one half of my face with those two colours mixed together for a really perfect foundation shade look. I'm really pleased with the coverage. The redness is gone. This spot doesn't look quite so bad. I don't think I can get any more coverage than that though. I'll try a little bit after. And then obviously this is the side I haven't done just to give you the comparison. But I will be doing that after. So now going into this second darkest, sorry, second lighter shade. I use this as my concealer because it's got more of a correcting property. So difficult not to go straight to the other side. I've got to keep reminding myself. For this I'll be using my BK Beauty A506. Now these really do blend in really, really easily and something that's impressed me quite a lot is I'm using a foundation as a concealer here but it absorbs so well and it's just not difficult to blend in underneath the eyes which is something I get a lot with, foundation, um, with concealers generally, especially in this bit here. And this is not settling into fine lines and it blends out like a dream. So can you see the difference between both sides here? It's colour corrected, it's blended out in a flash, you could build it up and get a bit more coverage. Can you see how you can see the darkness on this side? And this side is definitely reduced. Most importantly for me it's just not settling into lines, it really is so easy. So I'm going to put a little bit more of that on this spot here to see if I can get a bit more coverage. And that's about as good as it gets, but this literally came up this morning and it's quite bad, so definitely doesn't look as bad, but it's still there, isn't it? So next I'm going to go into this shade from the foundation, and this for me is a perfect contour shade. So I'll put a few dots here. You can be quite generous with this because it's not a particularly pigmented product, being a creamy foundation. So it's not going to be particularly dark. Now I would normally be doing both sides of the nose. This is a little bit odd for me. Just doing the one. Gotta run a bit down the nose there. That could have been a bit more precise, but anyway. And then I'll put some contour here and under the chin. And I'll go back in with my same brush, which I'll be using, as I said, for the whole look. You see how just instantly that's going in and it's really not strong at all but to be fair for my skin tone that's really how I like it so it's just a little bit of a shadow, a little bit of contour obviously if I want a bit more I can just dab in I don't particularly need it but I could just dab in there and grab a bit more and then 
the nose. I'm doing this quite roughly. I'm not going for a really polished look today. I'm just really showing you how this is so quick and easy and very suitable for travel. I'm now going in with this lightest one and I've put some down the centre of the nose which does mean when I do this side I will just be doing the contour there because it's impossible for me to split that bit. A little bit here to brighten and the same there just doing half the side of the face. With a little bit underneath the contour line. And then just blending it all out. So next going for the bronzer shade. Now this one here works as a very warm sort of bronze shade for me. A little bit too warm, which is why I dip into the one beneath it and sort of go over. It's a mixture really of the two. And this gives me that little bit of bronzing effect so easily. I would say I need a little bit of this and more of this. And that just blends out just like that. And you could just keep building and changing and creating other colours. I mean, this is something that really is accident proof because if you start loading on a colour you're not happy with, you can just correct it by using a different colour. So you can lighten it, darken it, deepen it. I'm really, really enjoying them if you can tell. So now for the blush shades. Now, like I said, you could create your own colour, which is something I haven't done yet. Well, I've done. With my first look, I used mostly this and this on the higher points of the cheek and then this one on the second day on the main part of the cheek and this one on the higher points and that, that worked very nicely. But I'm wondering whether to completely mix two shades together today. I think I will. I think I'll mix these two. So I'm going to dab into both in one go and see what I come up with. Well, that's a nice colour give you an idea of that I can show you on the back of my hand. So there's the coral one and there's the pink one. And then here's the two of them mixed together. So there's the coral, the pink and the two mixed together. And again you can keep changing it by just adding more so you can deepen up the coral or add more pink. This, I just think it's really good fun. It can really be built up look, so I'm going in for the second time and look how much more colour I've got there. I want to be quite generous here with my blush because I will be powdering down which will soften it and mute the colour slightly. So I'm not going to try and lighten that up too much at the moment. And I'm going to go in with this pink highlight cream and then just tap that there. You see that gives a really nice shine that. But what I have been doing is putting just a little bit on now and then after powdering going in with the, the lighter highlighter on top. So this is more of a shine from beneath the powder because I will definitely be powdering this every time I use it. One to lock it in and two because it would be way too greasy on my skin and just too much shine. You can probably see all the shine. So that is one side of my face with my base on and this side without. So now for the fun part on this side and I say fun because this is the bit I really enjoy doing. So I'm just going to start with the contour. I'm going to dab this in the place where I want contour. Now the advantage of doing this, now I'm going to be quite messy, it's not going to look mega precise, but the advantage of doing this as I said at the beginning is that I'm not loading up the product so I'm not getting quite as much grease on the face. It's a little bit more comfortable and I think when you've got an oily T-zone, it's just that much better for you to do it this way, if you can get it to work, that is. Now in with the bronzer, so mixing these two together. I think I'll just go like that to mix them. And I'm going to put this a little bit here, because I'm going to have mostly bronze there, so sorry, blush there, and here. There we go, that'll do. And now with the blushes, I'm mixing these two together again. And this is going here. And 
Need quite a bit more than that. Yeah, that's probably enough. Now I'm going in with my colour correcting concealer shade, which is the second lightest. So this is the concealer I'll use only on the eye area because I always go for this deeper shade to colour correct. And then I'll go in with the lightest one in all the areas where I would use a concealer to brighten. I would do down the middle of the nose, but I've just done that. So a little beneath the contour. A little to brighten there. And there. Now I'm mixing the two lightest together to make my foundation shade. And basically I'm going to go into all the areas that I haven't put anything down. I'm just going to try and catch it sort of in between the dots there of the contour and bronze shades. So I'm just wiping off my brush here just to make sure that I don't have blush because I'm going to go in in stages with this. So you can see now this complete and utter mess on my face. <laughs> Starting with the contour. I'm just going to blend the contour area in. I'm going to move up to the contour here just so that I've got more contour on my brush before I move to other shades. And then the bronze areas. I deleted out the next section because unfortunately it was all out of focus so sorry for that everybody. Basically what I went on to do after blending out the bronzer was to blend out all of the blush, move on to the concealer areas and lastly the foundation. So just moving in sections with the blending and then it's all just blended out together which you'll see now. I didn't put any of this pinky highlighter I just realised. Now this is not something I could really have included when I was building it on my face because this is where I had my blush and it would have just been too tricky I think to have included that so that had to go in towards the end. That really is pretty. So there you can see the two sides of the face done in those very different ways and I think this side pretty much works as well. You can see there's a little bit more coverage here, there's bound to be because there's almost like double the amount of layer, almost treble like we said. So a lot more lightweight but this really shows that if you're looking for something really quick and you just want to dab 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 in all the places it really is very quick like I've taken my time here because I'm describing to you what I'm doing and on my own now now that I know where to place it and I know it works I could just dab it on in a flash and just be off and I, I think that's phenomenal I really do I'm so pleased it worked because I've seen this so many times in the past and thought I really want to try this because it sounds like such a good idea so yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments, do you prefer the side that's more built up? I mean, obviously I can keep building here, but things like the areas that really matter for me, like under the eyes and the nose, they are fine because they've got exactly the same amount of coverage. They've both got specific foundation and concealer in these spots. So yeah, I'm really pleased with it. So the next step now is to powder. I'll just quickly go in with a sponge under the eye because I don't want to set without doing that just in case there's been a little bit of settling. So I'm using the new Hourglass Vanish Powder. This is the new one that recently launched, which I'm really enjoying. And this is in translucent light. I'm using my Trigwell Powder Puff. And now I'm going to set this and get rid of all this shine. Actually, I should start with under the eye, shouldn't I, before? before it settles into those lines a bit. I'll do one side of the face first so you can see the difference. I'm really enjoying this powder. I've been using it every single day since I got it. I really like the airbrushed finish. I love the way that it takes away the shine and keeps the shine at bay all day for me. It's blurring for me. It's very mature skin friendly. I really like it. So there we have the side with the powder and without and you can see you might like to have all this shine or maybe you just like to powder your t-zone only which I can show you now. I won't wear it like that today but I'll show you. So I'll just do under the eye. And I'll just go into the t-zone so around the nose, a bit of the chin. So I could stop there now and keep the sort of shine I'm getting from the blush and from the cream products. So that's really down to personal taste. But because 
I don't know, I do get greases coming through even though my skin's mostly dry out here, but I just prefer, I prefer to do that and then add a bit of highlighter at the end for my shine. That is personal preference. I do actually like the way it looks, but it's hard, hard to break a habit that you enjoy, I think. So there is my full base completely powdered down now and the one thing I will do just to finish from this palette is to go in with that highlighter. So using this sort of champagne coloured highlighter here, I'm now going to take this. And I think you can see that the, the highlighter I put beneath is still coming through. So if you want to have a very subtle highlight, you don't need to do what I'm doing now. But I would just like to have a little bit more of a shine there because the powder has taken off the shine. Yeah, you can see here how it just goes on quite well on top of powder, which is good to know. Now a little dab on the nose, on the centre. By there. And the cupid's bow. And there is my completed base done in the two different ways. What do you think? Do you think one side looks better than the other? Because I, in all honesty, think they look the same. It's just this side feels less heavy and more breathable because it's that much lighter. One thing I absolutely love is there isn't even the tiniest trace of caking, even if I look in my magnification mirror, something I don't get from hardly any products, even my top products, I get a tiny bit of caking in this corner of my nose here. But this, none at all. It's given me the coverage I need. I'd say it's light to medium, probably more on the light, but it's it's reasonable coverage, it's not too bad at all. When you think about the redness I get on my nose, that is completely gone. It hasn't covered that up. I would need a stronger concealer, but it is a really, really fresh, angry, <laughs> angry spot. I think underneath the eye is absolutely fine. And the blush you can still see underneath the powder, it's just the right amount, but it could have been built up quite easily, quite a lot. This really is very buildable. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. I'd love to know what you think of this. I'm going to go off now and do the rest of my makeup so you can see my final look. So there's my final makeup look now and you can see that it's settled down really, really nicely. I'm just going to put some setting spray on, the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush spray, which I always use. So it's quite generous with the setting spray, so I'll just give that a minute to dry down. And if you're curious about my eyeshadow, I've been loving this palette this week. And this is actually from Colourpop. I don't buy many things from Colourpop, but sometimes they have a colour story that screams to me. And because I've been enjoying sort of cooler tones recently, I thought I'd get this one because I just love this colour story. So this one is called So Elemental. I've popped a link below for you just to give you a flavour of some of these stunning shades. This is the one I've got on my eye right now, which I absolutely love. And then there's this glittery one, which I used the other day more in the corner, but look at that. I think it's the best palette I've ever got from Colourpop. And then this is the sort of silvery shimmer. It really is a stunning palette. I think I can actually say quite easily it's my favourite one from Colourpop. I love it. So all I've got on today is I've gone in with this grey here as my transition. And then this blue here I've used underneath the eye and just built up a little bit in the corner. And then I've gone in with this blue shimmer, one on my hand there, pretty much all over the lid. And then a little bit of this for the inner corner pop. And I use this one underneath the brow bone. So yeah, I've used this, I think it's the third day running I've worn this, I really enjoy it. And on the lips, something I've never mentioned before, but I ended up buying almost the entire set of these. I got them a bit late, so I didn't review them on this channel, but this is the NARS Lip Pencil. The Power Matte High Intensity Lip Pencil is what its full title is. And I just love these, I really do. They've got incredible longevity, but for a Power Matte, they are so creamy and comfortable. They are so easy to apply. I start off by using them as a liner. I'll just show you how they look. So they're really good to just line the lips, you don't need a liner and then you just fill in afterwards and they're really comfortable. I, I love them, I really do. I started off with one, then I went back and ordered three and then I went back and got about another six. I, I think these are phenomenal honestly, so <laughs> check these out if you haven't tried these. I've put a link below as well for these. So now my setting spray has died back, I just wanted to show you that I'll take my fluffiest brush and go back into the setting powder from Hourglass 
and just go over now to really lock this in. This will lock in the setting spray, take away that bit of extra shine that I've got from the setting spray. Doing this has given me such a good finish that has really lasted me throughout the day. I mean, this is a, a good tip if you really want your makeup to last with anything. But when you're using cream products, you don't expect longevity. And I am getting longevity with this palette. I really am. But I am using these tricks. So the first time I tried this palette, when I did it with the layering technique rather than the fast approach which I used on this side, I did actually film a check-in for you which I'll now show you. And when I did that I actually used the palette on the eyes as well and I found it to be a complete fail for the eyes. You'll see why in this video. I'll just show you it now. So this is a nine hour check-in now after wearing the Makeup Forever face palette for the very first time. And I am absolutely stunned, to be honest, because this was so greasy when I first applied it. But I powdered it down and you can still see the blush. I haven't touched my face anywhere apart from my lips today. I did use it in the eyes with a shimmer over the top and it looks terrible here. It's just collected as I thought it would really and creased up here. So I wouldn't use it on the eyes. Not that it's supposed to be used on the eyes, but everywhere else. I've still got no caking there. There was no caking on application, no caking throughout the day. Nine hours later, no caking. It stayed in place. The shine you're seeing is because I added some of the highlighter on top of the powder, which shows that it works really well that way. I did put a little bit down the nose. These lights are super bright, but my skin to the touch doesn't feel greasy. I'm really, really impressed with the way this is worn. So I was hoping to be able to say you can use this palette for literally everything. So you can also use it on the eyes, but you, it just didn't work at all. It was too greasy, even with powder. I did actually powder down and I added a bit of a shimmer just to make it look a little bit better, but still it just didn't work. But for everything else, I'm really, really pleased with the way this has worked and I'm quite amazed by it, to be honest. It's done exactly what I hoped it could. So you can build this up, as you saw, using colours that you can just mix to fit your skin tone. But then I think that's so good for if your skin changes throughout the year, whether you've got a tan or whether you've, you're really pale in the winter. This palette, you will not need anything else. You can just get this and you can conceal, you can correct, you can contour, you can have different foundation shades, you can have different blush shades. There's four blush shades, but if you mix them, you could create multiple blush shades. And the same with the bronzers, you can go for warm, cool, you can mix the two together. I, I think this is such a good fun palette. As someone who basically came to makeup because I love art, I love painting, this really spikes my cre creativity bug. I just absolutely love played with, playing with this. And it's just, I'm so happy it's done exactly what I wanted it to do. So this is definitely something that can be taken with me on a holiday and I would not need much at all. I think as you've seen today, if I've got this with a primer, sorry, I've got eyeshadow all over it there, look. So if I've got this and my setting powder, I can pretty much do my entire face. All I need to take with me is some sort of primer and definitely using my trusty Danessa Myrex is helping keep these oils from coming through. I just love that serum. And then obviously you need some sort of eyeshadow and lipstick, but I mean, how bulky is it when you're packing your concealers and your um, foundations and then you need your bronze and your contour and your blush and your highlights and you're just getting everything in this really sleek little little box it really is because it's so small so if you were to use this every day of the year I mean why not but I don't know how long it would last because obviously you're using quite a lot of the product when it comes to foundation but for me personally this is perfect for a quick day or for a travel especially if it's like a quick like weekend break and you really don't want to be thinking about everything so and you can go for quite a glam look there's no reason why this can't be a full glam look because you put that powder down you can really amp up the eyes like I've done quite a bit with my eyes today but you could go further and you could take maybe one product extra if you wanted to but I think you can get a fan fantastic look out of this and be really happy and from the two days I've tested this the longevity on this is fantastic one of the best I've ever come across in all honesty because like I said my nose I get a bit of caking here on application and it builds throughout the day with almost everything and underneath the eyes especially in the corners here when I'm using concealer and there's just nothing absolutely nothing I really hope you can see just how smooth this whole area looks I, I'm, I'm so delighted with it I really am 
So I'd love to know, did you try the older version of this? The one I was trying to get my hands on for ages. It just In the UK I couldn't find it anywhere when I wanted it. So I'm thrilled I've got this new one now. And have you tried it or the old one? And please let me know what you think. And have you got any, any suggestions for different ways to use it that I might not have thought of in this video? I would love to hear from you. I really would. And that's all from me for today. I've, I've really enjoyed doing this. It's been such a fun video. I hope you've enjoyed it too. And if you have, please do like and subscribe below. That really does help my channel. And I hope to see all of you for my next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.